This is Michael Clara. Welcome to another edition of my blog, Local School Boards Can Make a Difference, located at michaelclara.com. This particular blog entry is about Christy Sweat and her testimony that she gave uh, this, this week, actually, to the uh, Education Committee here in Utah in the House of Representatives on a bill, HB 81, sponsored by uh, Representative Hall. I have some concerns about what she said and, and uh, feel that she left some things out that I wanted to set the record straight. And so I'm making this podcast to send it to the uh, Senate committee that will be hearing this bill so that they could be, I guess, in a sense, forewarned of what she may say if she repeats this information that she gave here, then at least they'll have the full picture. Um, this will be a quick presentation. I became aware during the summer that, that uh, there was a school board uh, within the state that was meeting outside of its geographical, that had a meeting, a school board meeting outside of its geographical area. Uh, they had um, one of their school board meetings at Snowbird Ski Resort. Um, this uh, school district is very far away from Snowbird. It's not, uh, Snowbird is not within the geogra geographical area of the school district. And uh, I thought, you know, th that is not right. Many of the constituents of the school board are uh, not capable of traveling to Snowbird to participate in the school board meeting. So here's the bill. The bill requires school board meetings to be within the geographical area of the school district. There are a few exceptions. All right, so um, you heard the you know what the bill is about, and then uh, several people spoke to the bill, and we'll just listen in on what um, Christy Sweat, who I serve with on the Board of Education in Salt Lake City, um, she was the board president the last six years, which was three different terms, and uh, now she is uh, continues to serve on the school board, uh, but not as president this year. Anyone else in the public? Thank you for the opportunity. Christy Sweat, I am a local school board member from Salt Lake City School District. Um, unfortunately, the meeting that uh, Representative Paul is speaking about is from my district. And the meeting was a work meeting. It was noticed. It's annually noticed. It's, we've done it for seven years now. I've chaired that meeting. And the only vote that's taken at that meeting was a co limited consent agenda for our purchasing which, you know, we don't want to hold up the business of the district. Otherwise, what we do at that meeting on an annual basis is look back at how the year went the year before and how it went forward and what we want to do forward as far as agenda items. There are no other votes that are taken. Um, one thing that I did want to mention is that, you know, in the seven years that we have had this meeting, we have never had one constituent ever say to us, that they couldn't make it to the meeting. And we offer rides. If anyone was to call us, we would carpool up. We would make sure that our constituents were able to attend this meeting. There are a few times over the years that we've had people come, but most times it's just been our board and our staff that's been there. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, so there's her testimony. Um, you know, I don't know. It says here that she's there, uh, Salt Lake City Board of Education. I don't know if the board president sent her, and, and you know, she doesn't distinguish if she's just, you know, um, if she's speaking for the board, um, you know, it, it, but, but it doesn't matter. I think, uh, you know, I'm of the opinion that any elected official has a right to go testify wherever they want. Um, interestingly enough, I testified the same day at the planning commission uh, fighting a, uh, a cell tower that's going up on a school in my neighborhood that, and that the superintendent has made an agreement with Verizon Wireless and bypassed the Board of Education on it, and I'm opposed to it. My community's opposed to it. So I went and testified at the Planning Commission on the same day. Otherwise, I would have been up on the Hill at this hearing. And then the board president sends a letter to the Planning Commission telling them that I'm only going there as a citizen and I have no right or authority or direction or um, uh, authorization from the board to be testifying, which I argued I don't need it. 
Um, you, you know, I, I'm an elected official and have the right to represent the people that elected me in any venue that I want to speak at. And, and so I just, it's a, it's an editorial note. It has nothing to do with this issue at hand other than here, uh, Christie's testifying, but I don't think that, uh, the, the education committee received a nasty letter, uh, from our board president minimizing and marginalizing anything that, um, that Christy Sweat is saying. So I believe she has a right to, to be there. Uh, you know, uh, she left some things out, so I'm just trying to fill in the gaps of, of uh, and give uh, the legislators all the information in terms of uh, what happened from our board perspective, or from my perspective on the board, I should say. So here's a video back in June of, uh, June 3rd of 2014, where I questioned, why are we going to Snowbird? And she left that part out, which isn't, I guess, her obligation to tell them what I'm thinking. That's why I'm doing it now. Can I just ask about the venue for that retreat? I just didn't see, I mean, last year was my first year. I didn't see any value of driving up to we absolutely can. It was a suggestion that was made a number of years ago, you know, that to, um, actually it came from um, us asking other boards right. around the state, you know, what they did. And they found it would be beneficial to get out of their district building and to go somewhere and sit down and do their planning meeting. We tried it for a couple of years. If, we, if the board, if the majority of the board would like to come back here, we can come back I don't here. think, I don't know the question. Like three or four thousand. I think it's a great benefit. It's not. No, it's, no, it's not. It's, 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 it's the cost, cost of your meals, uh, but we can get you the exact cost. Well, I, that was just one factor. I mean, I just, I just, you know, it's easier to come here and if everybody else is coming, it just, it, I mean, it's a fast meeting for me to go up all the way up there and then leave. I mean, if I was going to the purpose. Uh, all right, so I won't bore you with the whole discussion, but uh, my point is that I brought it up, was concerned about, um, you know, having to go up there and, and, and on many levels that I was concerned about. So let's listen in to go, let's go back to the, to the hearing this er earlier this week, and now uh, Christy's going to answer some questions, and this is by Representative McKay. Okay, all right. So, excuse me, we've got a question for the member of the Salt Lake Board of Education. Can, would you mind coming and responding to that? Excuse me, ma'am, can we just come back up, please? And is this Representative McKay? You want to ask a question? Okay. I'll move over to this mic. <clears throat> So help me because uh, I'm trying, I understand what the sponsor is trying to accomplish. Uh, obviously, he's trying to make it more transparent, get more public interaction in board meetings, et cetera. Help me understand there's got to be a purpose for why it needs to be at a remote location outside of the, outside of the district boundaries. Help me understand why it, why it needs to be outside the boundaries. I guess I'm attacking it from a different reason, not that it's nice to have it outside, but why it needs to be you've said is that it was a choice that we made as a board it's a choice that we've made for you know seven years just to get together in a relaxed area and and have our work meeting and that so it's not a need to it was just a choice that we made and that we've done now for seven years yeah so uh from a legislative perspective it's it's easy for us, right? We always come here, uh, you know, for, for our meetings and we have a big fancy building that's dedicated to it. Uh, I'm very grateful and love this campus because it's very accommodating for the public to come and to be part of the conversation. Uh, there are microphones, there's recording devices, there's note takers, staff is here. I mean, all of those things are present to make this an, a venue where people can come and participate. When I contrast that to the, to the resort up at, at Snowbird, uh, I would uh, I would argue that, that that might not be the same. However, in professional, I know how good it is to get away from the office. You know what I mean? And so right. I'm, I, I'm struggling with this in my mind I'm on the policy. It's nice to get away, 
but like you said, it doesn't need to happen. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to balance those and two. I, I how, how should that. I, how should I answer that? No, I think that's it. I think you've brought up some great points and it's something that we'll obviously talk about again this year. Um, I think that uh, we make every effort to make sure we have a recording, that we videotape, that we put minutes, that we notice, and we notice, you know, six months in advance. We put an agenda out, we stick to the agenda, there are no changes on the agenda. You know, so we, we make every effort to do that. And on top of that, make sure that if there is anybody who would like to come, and especially that there isn't a burden, you know, for anyone who would like to come, that they are more than welcome to do that, and we will even provide a ride for them to do that. But like I said, over the past seven years, we've not had one person call us and ask us, you know, for those accommodations. And that's great. I think if you look at what, you know, you, what you provide to make that accessible, I think it's great. Uh, it's difficult to argue, though, that a 45-minute ride one way and a 45-minute ride back one way, you know, inside, outside the district, et cetera, okay. might stretch uh, even people that would probably want to come, but they just don't have the time to make that commitment to jump. And I... That's what I'm balancing in my head is okay. our uh, – <clears throat> I have to be careful with this because the legislature has a lot of comforts, right, when you look at uh, around at our building and our, our, our soft chairs compared to the ones you guys are sitting in. Uh, I'll, I'll say, though, when I balance the convenience of where we would like to be versus where it is open, accessible, transparent, et cetera, okay. I think there's a lot of value in making sure – that we give up some of what we think is nice for what is convenient public to, you know, for the public to attend. And that's, that's probably, uh, but I, I really appreciate you recognizing the, the problem I have or the dilemma in my mind. You've done a great job answering I those do, questions. I do, and thank you. And I will, I will take those, the comments that you've given us today and definitely bring that back. So excellent points made in that uh, question and answer. And I appreciate the fact that, you know, Representative McKay refers to it as a, remote location, which it is for somebody like me who utilizes public transit. Um, and, and, you know, that was, and, you know, I take exception a little bit to the fact that Christy says that no one, uh, called us, no one said anything. We already saw that, you know, I, well, but, but actually she, in her mind, I don't count. And so that would make sense that now that I mentioned that is that she would say that it's not a burden for anyone and no one said anything because if it's a, just a burden for me and, uh, and, and, you know, I said something that she's right in her mind, nobody said anything. However, my concern is for anybody that wants to participate, um, in the hearing or, or in any of our school board meetings, just like, like these representatives are bringing up in the hearing. So the day of that, of that, um, meeting up at, at, at Snowbird, I documented it on Facebook and on, on my Twitter account. And this is what happened on Facebook. And, and, you know, I had to like catch a bus at 5:30 in the morning. And so I documented, and this is on UTA's webpage. You get on a trip planner. And this was my first leg of the trip where I had to take a bus from my home to the track station. And then, um, at the track station at 2100 South, I had to transfer on to, uh, um, the train. And you see one of my neighbors <laughs> chimed in and said, fewer retreats, more money in schools. And, um, so then the next leg of my trip is at 7200 South track station. I had to get off the train and then board another bus. And then you'll see here that people are asking, why are you going, you know, to, to a meeting up at, at, at Snowbird? And, uh, and actually, I think I said that wrong. Yeah. So, so here's a, the station I'm at. And then I, uh, boarded the bus and then some more people by now are commenting. And, you know, one of my neighbors says, this is hilarious. Thanks for the report, Michael. Crazy stuff. And, and it's crazy that I'm taking a three hour bus ride, um, to get to a school board meeting that I'm a member of, no less. So let's go back to the hearing. And this is the last uh, um, question that was given to um, uh, board member Christy Sweat. Okay, do you have a question for her as well? Okay, Representative Fawson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, having, having served on a, on a school board myself and served in, in city council, I understand the need for retreats and I understand the need for off-site visits and things like that. We, we had to do them all the time. You have to go out and inspect a building site or you have to go out, or, you know, you go to your annual trainings off-site. What I don't understand is, is the, the absolute necessity for making decisions off-site. So in, in an effort to be open and transparent, 
we would come back within our school boundaries, we would come back within our city limits, and we would make our decisions and, and have our discussion there. Uh, so I guess that's where I am kind of getting hung up. I'm, I'm not quite sure where the line is. I mean, if I, if I can fly my entire city council to Alaska and, and make decisions up there, uh, you know, with, without any public participation, you know, that's wrong in my mind. I don't think, I don't think, and even, even traveling 45 minutes is, is, uh, as some have already said, it's restrictive. Um, even if you're streaming, there's no participation with, with the public. So I, I, you know, I, I would like to see an opportunity for those retreats and things to still happen, but okay. decisions made within the boundaries that, you know, that, that we're making decisions for. I appreciate those comments. I do. I think that um, that's why we limit, you know, any, well, it, we don't take any business except for that limited consent agenda that had the purchasing report. And, and I would say to that, you can convene a special meeting. And to, help, to hold that back in. Okay, exactly. I will take those comments back. Thank, Thank you. you. So I appreciate uh, Representative uh, Fawson's um, point, you know, that uh, about voting and making decisions. And for whatever reason, uh, Christy Sweat has minimized what happened in terms of the vote um, on that day. And it wasn't just a purchase report that was voted on. Um, uh, she's correct when she says a limited consent agenda, but this language here on the consent agenda says that um, if, you know, as a member of the board, that the following items are routine, which I don't agree that these were routine at this particular time of the year. If there are questions or concerns that require board discussion before a vote of approval, any board member may request to have that item placed on the discussion or action agenda of the next regularly scheduled board business meeting, which I did. In this case, I actually uh, was concerned about the purchase report and, um, you know, the human resource report, we actually had new principles and this is the time that the board can vote against those. I was actually in support of the principles that, that were there. Um, last year I was not, but, and, and we, we, you know, so anyways, on this particular one, the purchase report I was concerned about, I sent her an email saying, please remove it and put it on the action item. She doesn't email me back. And then, then in the meeting, she'll say, well, I got the email at 5.30 and, you know, I couldn't, and, uh, uh, you know, PM the day before is when she says she read it. It's like, well, I, my email works at that time too. And had she given me that information, I would have come prepared to this meeting to discuss my concerns. But in this case, I was not prepared because I rode the bus and the train. I didn't bring a, a big briefcase to the meeting full of stuff. And I wasn't prepared to speak about this because of what the agenda says. Um, she'll say in the meeting that it says that a board member may request it. That doesn't mean it's going to happen, which she's right. In this instance, it didn't happen. It did not get moved to the action agenda. Um, and so this is what, you know, I, again, I'm, I'm a bit concerned that she minimized the impact of this. This is what we voted on, the, you know, hiring of new principals and assistant principals and promotions, which is to me significant, you know, to the life of a school. Um, you know, on the purchase report, there were several things on there. This is one of the big ticket items, the $70,000. Um, you know. and so let's listen in, um, and, and to what happened, and I'll just l let you listen to part a portion of this particular meeting um, when we were at Snowbird. Thank you very much. So our next item is our limited consent agenda, and if we can hold our comments until I can get um, a motion, and then I'm going to open it up for discussion. Discussion because that was a request. So. Oh, but I, I have it marked on mine. But I mean, if, if it's critical to do this. <clears throat> I mean, you should put on here that, that you're going to move know, it to the one, next meeting, well, or at least tell me that before I, okay. this meeting. Well, Michael, again, I didn't get to tell you last time, mm -hmm. and so, you know, to request, to, for a board member to request it doesn't necessarily mean that it's just going to be automatically done. And so that's why I wanted to bring it here, but if the rest of the board feels like, okay, no, we need to go ahead and, and we'll move it to August, if that's what the majority of the board wants to do, then that's what we'll do. You know, I just, I'm, I'm concerned about some of the things that are on here that we need to pay for. That's why, you know, and I'm sorry that. Well, the purchasing report has, it's large. And it it is always large. is at this time of year because yeah. it's a very busy time of purchasing. So to simply pull the whole report seems 
I'm just following the instructions here in, in the absence of anybody telling me, you know, anything yes. different. All right. but, Michael, know. following the, 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 the message being delivered is, if we follow those instructions mm -hmm. and give you what you want, it's bad for the function of the district. It's not giving me what I want. It's following what this is. As a member of the board, if I'm yeah. going to vote on this and I have some questions that I wanted answered, and if and this is it would be moved to the next meeting, and I know we were going to discuss it here, I would have brought it. But, but because, I didn't bring everything with Yes, but because it is bad for the district, that's why we're inviting you to share your concerns now. And what did I say? Did, I, did you hear what I said? I didn't bring the paperwork with me because I didn't know it was going to be okay. discussed here. So I'm okay, not going to so be manipulated into, into no, saying, oh, well, let's, you know, I mean, you can vote on it. It's on the consent agenda. It can't be consent because it doesn't have my consent. Right. So, so if there's a way to move it, I'll vote against it. Was there anything specific that jumped out at you? Can you give me some ideas? There was, but I would need my copy that I had marked. So all right well let's move on you know but you get the idea this is a little more happened there and, and speaking you know to representative Fawson's, um you know point you know about making decisions off-site um in this particular case and again here's a language that was on the agenda it said that you move it to the next item a next action item agenda so i was okay with that because the concern i had on the purchase report was another payment that they were doing to uh, one of their past associates, uh, Charlie Hausman. And, um, you know, so here is a, I filed a federal complaint on January 14th of 2014 because I objected and I believe that fraud was occurring um, when they were paying a past associate for work that he didn't do. And here they are sneaking in a payment at a meeting that's off-site that that now they're you know the the agenda says well you can move it to the next business meeting which is good because i would have had people there to to be concerned about to voice their concern about this payment also but i couldn't do that because they don't tell me in advance and then you know i'm i'm out in the middle of nowhere there's nothing i can do uh you know about it and then you know the rest of the board at the time is just complicit in this kind of behavior so it goes back to in my opinion you know to what happened in the what we you know our founding fathers talked about in the declaration of independence that he has called together legislative bodies at places unusual uncomfortable and distant from the depository of their public records for the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with his measures and this is exactly what this administration and this board leadership did on that day with that particular issue and then it's interesting how then when the the, the behavior and the decisions are questioned they're going to try to say oh no 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 and minimize it no 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 it was just this little thing so in closing let's go to the house floor and see what happened to the bill um, just a couple days ago on the house floor madam reading clerk for items on the house third reading calendar second substitute hb 81 local school board meeting requirements representative hall this bill was heard in education with a vote of 10 to 2. Representative Hall. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, during this last summer, I became aware of a school district which held a board meeting at, a, at, at Snowbird Ski Resort, which was miles and miles away from the school district uh, geographical boundaries. So second substitute HB 81 requires, with a few exceptions, that the school board hold the school board meeting within the geographical boundaries of the school districts. Thank you. Discussion to the bill. Representative Briscoe. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would the sponsor yield to a couple of questions or more? Will the sponsor yield to a series yes. of questions? Yes, yes. Proceed. Uh, I think we're, I, my understanding is we're referring to the Salt Lake City School Board. Is that accurate? Uh, I was made aware of, of that situation during the summer. That is correct, yes. Um, I wasn't going to out them, but... I was a member of the Salt Lake City School Board, 1998 to 2002, and I don't ever remember holding any school board meetings outside the geographic boundaries. My understanding was also that the purpose of the meeting was to do some planning. I don't think they approved any budgets. I don't believe they voted on any... Uh, I'm not sure that any votes were taken at the meeting. Uh, that was my understanding given to me by some school board members. Do I have that inaccurately? Do you uh, want 
The, um, the meeting was, did take place. And there was one item that was actually. All right, let me stop it there for a second because I want to give some insight here into what the planning part of this meeting was about. And it was touted as, it, you know, it's this retreat. We have to be in a different frame of mind and we have to go up there for the fresh air because we got a plan for the next year. The planning consisted of the superintendent handing out a schedule and telling us this is what we were going to do. So it was just silly and to say that before the meeting that that's what we were going up there to do. And it's even sillier to say it after the meeting. This is what happened. All right, you guys, let's get back on track. Okay, we're going to do a couple of things a little quicker than others. And it'll make sense as we, we progress. So the first thing is just the study session topics and tentative schedule for this coming year. The pattern is still around the eight essentials. Um, we have a follow-up in September from today's conversation about what process you want to use for your next five-year plan. And then it would be really helpful if you have any other suggestions or feedback on this tentative plan to get that to Christy, Heather, and myself over the next couple of weeks so that we can try and pull that together. The we had to have this fund list to be public on before school year. Yes, yes. The second one, and, and thank you. So there you have it. That was the, that was a big planning session, um, and so uh, the bill ends up. Uh, Madam Reading Clerk uh, passing, House, you know, leaving it, it, it passed through the House of Representatives, Second and and I appreciate HB that. Local school board meeting requirements. I appreciate uh, the uh, members of the House of Representatives that voted for this. I want to give a shout out to Angela Romero, who is my representative, who I did not get a chance to talk to her about this, and I appreciate the fact that she supported this and recognized uh, the need to hold. Uh, school board meetings within our own uh, boundaries, within our own community. And so that concludes this uh, podcast. It went longer than I expected, but for those that are interested, I think we'll endure it uh, to the end. Uh, thank you very much.